Okay, Hannah. So PWC two coming up in Pittsburgh. We have a killer lineup, and the lineup's going to look different than the last lineup, right, Hannah? What 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 do we have to start out with for the PWC two Pittsburgh Wrestling Club for their second event? So yeah, first off, this one's going to look a lot different than the first one, just for the sole fact that you're not going to see a ton of pit guys. Why, everyone may ask? Well, it's NCAA competition season. Can't have as many NCAA guys taking the mat. Can't have any at all. So you're going to see a lot of young guys, which will be fun. But Zeb, these young guys are going before the four feature senior national level caliber bouts. But these young guys, everyone, they're not just some kids we're throwing on the mat just to say it's cute and fun. These are some serious young wrestlers who you, who you are going to want to start being fans of early. You're going to want to follow them now. You're going to see them being these big guys in high school. And who knows, they may be eventual national champs that you all love to see competing in these senior level competitions. So Zeb, first and foremost, we have Bo Bassett on this card, and he's not wrestling but once, but twice. And his first match will be against TJ Clinton. So tell me what you think about this first matchup. So first things first, TJ is a, uh, he's an Ohio guy. So I, I, I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, I, I can't lie to you about Bo Bassett. He, it's not a brave take. I told you this, and he's on the card twice. He's the best middle school youth wrestler in the United States of America. Once again, not a brave take on my part. It's just a fact. Um, you know, he's already gone up and wrestled nationally top 10 ranked 106 pounders. He only weighs 100 pounds, by the way, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, going, he's going up not once but twice to 110 here. And I'm guessing he's probably 105 or 107 or whatever. You know, he, he's not like pulling all this crazy weight, right? So him, he's the bookend, right? He's the first match and the last match. You just don't see things like this when we're talking about these. This is new, right? This is new. This is crazy because he is incredible. He's an arm bar, head lever series guy, a tilt guy on top. And I told you, I, already met, I dropped the two names to you. I feel very confident dropping Logan Steber and Spencer Lee when I, when I do that. And, and that might, people might think that's pressure for Bo Bassett. Bo Bassett's an absolute savage. His brother Keegan. Well, he doesn't also he doesn't also seem too concerned about the pressure, considering this is going to be broadcasted on Rockfin. There are going to be eyeballs on the screen, and he's wrestling not once but twice. So he's very confident in his conditioning, his skill level, and his ability to compete in front of all of these people. Rip your arms off and beat you with them. Whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever. I, I'm telling you right now, you are going to be like he is farm machinery. You don't want to get caught in the farm machinery. And, and listen, Clinton and Cyrus Hurd, really good guys. Really good guys. Mm -hmm. so, so maybe he's given some weight up. Maybe he, you know, whatever it may be, right, he's going to wrestle twice. So maybe we'll see a different Bo Bassett versus Cyrus Hurd, right, if that, if that ends up being the last match. But he's incredible. He's on another level. And you're going to see that, Hannah, and you're going to probably watch a couple videos and I had him at the National Middle School Duels. I had him at the Defense Soap Duels. Incredible. Just an incredible – he's a really good athlete, too. That's the other thing. Like, I don't know if we give Spencer Lee the credit of uh, the athlete he is. He's a really good athlete. And um, I think that's overlooked a lot. And I think, you know, Logan Steber was an incredible athlete. You know, people really confuse athleticism and, oh, they're just wrestlers. No. These guys are really good athletes. That's the other thing about it. Um, and then Keegan, Keegan Bassett, has uh, Connor Whitley – that should be obviously another good match. And Keegan's taken some losses at some of these events. I think he took a loss at the uh, – no, he was undefeated at defensive duels. I think he might have taken a loss at national middle school duels. But Ke Keegan's right there. And then their, their cousins, Melvin Miller, he's going to be at 90 uh, pounds versus Carter Beck. So up and down the lineup, you got these Johnstown, Pennsylvania guys that are just – they're nails. They're nails, and you're going to see – what they do, and you'll, you'll co you, you can go look at a couple Instagram posts. They do a lot of 5 a.m., before 5 a.m. training in this, like, dungeon in the Bassett house. And then um, Bill Bassett, their dad, owns the compound uh, strength training for middle school and youth uh, athletes. So <laughs> they're, they're releasing – they're really good. You're going to see really good three matches out of these guys. Up and down the lineup, though, great, 
great matches. Uh, lots of nationally ranked guys, a bunch of Super 32 champs. The, the undercard of youth athletes, uh, January 26th at 6 p.m. live on Rockfin. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be where it's at. Is there anybody that, you know, besides the three I talked about, right? Uh, you know, Bo, Keegan, Melvin Miller. Is there anybody else that you saw on here that you're like, oh, oh, I wouldn't mind seeing that? Or, or are you just uh, enthralled hearing about the, the Bassets and uh, Melvin Miller? Listen, think? I have looked up these kids. We've been checking out their profiles. If you just look at the physique of these young kids, you would be blown away. These aren't these 110 pound kids that are just skinny. They're here for right now until they grow. Like these are little machines that look like they've been put together in a lab. So I'm really excited to see the level of maturity they bring to the mat in this type of situation, the type of pressures they can handle. Um, and just overall, the talent at this young level is really fun to watch. I mean, I've grown up and I've seen the sport on every single level and getting to kind of revert back to this younger type of wrestling will be super fun. And I think it'll be fun to see how these kids react to this type of stage where they're going to be looking up to a lot of these uh, men and women that are going to be taking the taking the mat in these feature bouts. But uh, I did want to mention, just for everybody's knowledge, we have Chase Karenbauer, 70 pounds against Nico Capusta. Tino Sholo at 75 pounds against Cash Mitchell. We also will then have at 125 pounds, Jared Goldberg versus Devin Margo, just to get everyone's names out there. Who you can expect to see, maybe you're already fans of these young guys, but if you're not, get on the train because Zeb is very excited, I know, to talk about these matches as they're happening and has created a lot of hype around them. And so... I believe these young kids can live up to the potential. So let's see what they can bring on Tuesday, Zeb. Okay. So you, it's funny that you bring that up. And I, I <laughs> this is awesome. Um, Mickey Burnett's mom, Janet, just posted a picture. And Mickey Burnett's one of uh, Luke's uh, athletes at Pitt. And um, like I said, TJ Clinton's a Burnett trained guy. I coached the club, was in the club, and plunged all the toilets and mopped the mats for 15 years, 15 plus years. So I've known Mickey since he was born, right? Eric Burnett's one of my best friends. He was an All-American at Claren. She posted this picture of his youth picture next to his pit picture. He literally looks like a wet rat. And yeah. they had these horrible <laughs> mullets, and they used to let their hair grow and because they're, they're brunettes. And if you know anything about brunettes, they could survive off of eating like a power cord and having some water. They're just like tough, gritty individuals. And there's this – it is like what you're saying, though about the, what the athletes look like from a Mickey Burnett. And look, you understand this Mickey Burnett picture, it might be 10 years old. I don't think it is. And it was always on their, their, their fridge when I would go over there. Janet and Eric would put their pictures up. And they just, both the Burnett brothers look like skinny, wet rats. The Bassett brothers, Melvin Miller, TJ Clinton, Cyrus Hurd, don't look like wet rats. They look like college guys. And their technique, it's, I just can't believe like what Bo Bassett is doing going and wrestling the nationally ranked high school kids, sophomores, juniors, seniors, and just putting it on them. Tech falling them, Hannah. Hannah, he is, he is tech falled multiple yes. top 10, 106 pounders at the high school level. He's in seven. There was like something, I don't know when this was posted exactly, but when I was looking up different profiles, there was something about like 30 techs, and that could have been from a year ago, but like 30 tech falls, Zeb. When I send you the head <laughs> lever that he hit, the head lever that he hit, in the national middle school duels finals, it was against a, a, a PA junior high state champion. He hit a head lever felony. I was like felony. How did that kid's shoulder stay in the joint? It was insane. And, and, but like the nicest kid you'd ever want to meet the card though, up and down the card, that Melvin Miller Carter back match. I'm really excited about that. Cause Melvin Miller goes, Melvin Miller goes Carter back. He's yeah. They got their work cut out for him. It's going to be awesome, but I hope we get some surprises. Hopefully we see Bo get pushed to the, the full regulation or, or, you know, one or two point match. I just haven't seen it yet. So, but I think that's what a lot of these types of matches, you can create these all-star matches and that's what you're hoping for. You're hoping to see the guy that's coming in the favorite really get pushed to his limits. And that's going to show who he is coming down the line. And maybe a lot of these guys need that too. What you see in a lot of these events in general, all levels is you see a lot of guys being humbled at the same time. So it's, you know, I'm coming in the favorite. I have all these accomplishments, but here comes this guy out of nowhere, doesn't have any of the accomplishments I have, but he's just as legit as I am. 
So I think that's what I'm really looking forward to as well is not just knowing, getting to know these young kids, but seeing who's really going to push the best to their limits. 6 p.m. start for that. And we don't know if it's going to be Bo Bass at TJ Clinton first or Bo Bass at Cyrus Hurd first. We know that it will be a Bo Bass at match to start. So you're going to be, you're going to want to tune in right at six because you, you don't want to miss him um, wrestling. Obviously. I mean, we're not making any of this stuff up. He's what we uh, say he is. So um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. And um, the, the, the senior matches, Hannah, talk to us about the senior matches. I'm really excited about those. We have less senior level matches now or college level matches now, obviously because the college season has, and we don't have any pit wrestles, right? Whereas last time we well, had you know, Mickey, Nino, you know, we had the college guys in there and it was, it was pretty good. Um, but yeah, can I run us through some of the, uh, the high level senior matches that we're going to have at the PWC two on Rockford. Yeah, so the only pit guy you will see is a pit wrestling club member, Luke Pletcher, and that will be the feature match against Dean Heil. And we'll get to that at the end because you know, we know how to, that's going to be the last match. It's going to be the feature bout. But before then, we don't know the exact lineup for these yet either. But the first one is uh, the women's match. Let's talk about that. We just talked to Skylar Grote a few weeks ago, got us really excited for some of these women's matches and the competitions that are coming up for women's wrestling. So having these added to the card just makes it more exciting. I feel like I'm a new fan of someone every time I see these. Um, Diamond Guilford, 78 kilograms against Victoria Francis. Uh, first off, Diamond Guilford, a 2020 U23 um, Nationals champion in Nebraska, two-time national champ for Missouri Baptist University. Victoria Francis, 78 kilograms as well, coming out of the Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. She was a 2019 senior U.S. World Team member, um, junior world bronze medalist, two-time national champ. So these women's have, have the credentials, and they're going to be exciting. What do you know about them? What are you expecting to see from them on the mat? So the big thing with these two – I think you're going to see a lot more action than you're used to seeing. I think that, you know, obviously both of them have won multiple age level national championships. And what I got to say to, to Keith Gavin would be, and Pittsburgh wrestling club would be, they went out and they got, you know, before they had two girls that were, you know, new at wrestling for the most part, right. Two Pennsylvania girls. And I think that that was awesome to get them on the card. Right. I think mm -hmm. upping the ante and getting two legit senior level athletes that you're going to see tons of action with and then probably carry over obviously to Bryce Jordan center. So you know who they are, you know, depending on their qualification or not for, you know, cause we know Skylar qualified, but it's really weird. The people that haven't qualified for the, the Olympic trials, it would kind of blow your mind. I, and I'm going to have to ask these two. Well, also because of a lot of the, the pandemic and the it's, opportunities exactly, that were taken away. Exactly. Yes. So don't think it's because these athletes haven't reached the potential no. we've expected them to. It's just because they haven't had the opportunity to contend. That's correct. So, uh, you know, the, the one I would use as an example would be, um, I think 57 kilos or 55 kilos. Um, Lauren Louise, she's a barbarian athlete for barbarian <laughs> apparel. We had her on the show. She won the U S open. She's not mm -hmm. qualified. When mm -hmm. she told me that, I was like, wait, 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 you won the, you won the open. She's like, yeah. no, I'm not qualified. The, it went off of last year's open, that one that they had in Texas. Mm -hmm. That is what the result that they used. They're using the 2019 open. You're, you're following me, right? Mm -hmm. The 2019 open is what qualified them or didn't qualify them because they're using, you know, they were acting like it was going to be a 2020 April Right. Olympic trial. Right. Now it's a 2021 April Olympic right. trials. I think 9th through the 11th at Bryce Jordan. I think we'll see Hannah Myers there hopefully under Ohio cast. We don't know though, but um, you know, that, that, that would be the biggest thing. These girls, yeah. these, these are women, sorry. These women, they have a huge step to take if they still have to qualify. And I, you know, I don't know mm -hmm. their status. I didn't know Lauren's status. She won the open and I thought she was qualified and she wasn't, Oh no, I got to go to last chance. And I was like, my head almost exploded. I was like, oh, what? It is. And she's someone, she's someone, when you think of women's wrestling, you really do start to think of her. She's been promoting herself well. She's not afraid to get on these types of cards. She's not afraid to wrestle anyone. So the fact that you say that, it blew my mind a little bit too, because just as much as you see her in the talks of top women's wrestlers right now in the country, she's one of the names that's definitely up there. So Diamond and Victoria should be a great matchup. Both of them, like you said, uh, have won age level championships. One has a, a world medal and a bronze for Victoria. So that would be, I'm just excited to see matches like that. And, and Keith, 
Gavin to go out and get these matches, right? And make sure the athletes are compensated, make sure everything's taken care of. We get a high level match. The, the, the women are getting a match to prepare for competition. And that would be the biggest thing. I think that they, they struggled to get competition over the pandemic. Obviously that people were struggling for places to practice, let alone get competition. I think that's the biggest thing these cards have done. And I think the other thing is we are not up against, we, when I say Pittsburgh wrestling club, we're not up against uh, a Nittany land wrestling club card. We were up against mm -hmm. that last time. Um, I don't know, but maybe that coach Kale will announce that there's going to be a card with 30 guys. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He does what he does. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, that's what makes me excited about this one. And we don't know, like you said, we don't know match order yet, but I think that when you have two uh, multiple time, you know, national champion stop, stop sign havers, as I like to call them, people with stop signs. I think whenever you put them out there, you're going to have a dynamic matchup one way or another. So I'm excited for it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, one way or another, you're sick happens. Something crazy is going to happen. I'm excited for it. So, yeah, I just got to get their status, though, because I'm really concerned about if we're going we're to see them at Bryce right. Jordan or not, right? And what weight. So yeah. I'm excited for that. Hopefully we get the opportunity to talk to them more so we have even more information, which knowing Zev and I, we will. I promise you that. But Diamond also saying she's a lot vocal on social media talking about she loves how freestyle is. She loves how freestyle's focused around a lot of offensive action. So I'm expecting that match to be nothing but a ton of action. Really excited. But like you were saying, last time we saw – some Lock Haven University women's wrestlers. It was their first senior level matches. They were first freestyle match competition. And now their women's head wrestling coach, Ronnie Perry, will be taking them out at 75 kilograms out of Matttown, USA. Um, he was a 2018 national finalist in the Division I um, competition. And I'm really excited to see him. I know those girls probably are too, being like, well, we were on this card first and now coach is taking the mat and his opponent will be Quentin Prez out of Navy Marine Corps. RTC, three-time NCAA qualifier for Campbell and he took third place at U23 Nationals. So Zeb, your thoughts on that matchup? I just want to see Ronnie Perry compete again. Mm -hmm. It's the last time I saw Ronnie Perry compete, which would have been, in, in person at least, would, would have been 2018. And he knocked off Sorensen at the NCAs, and you know he made the NCAA finals. I think he had Zane train, didn't he? Um, yeah, I just like watching this guy compete because he competes so hard. He wrestles so hard, and that to me, first off, that's what I want to see. I want to see because the guy competes hard, right? Now he's coaching. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you lose that fire, maybe a little bit. Maybe we're not going to see the same Ronnie Perry. But then if I were to say that, uh, then Keith Gavin wouldn't have been in the flow eight man and beat Shakur Rashid, right? So, so that's keep, what I'm excited to see. But keep this in mind, Zeb. This is his senior level debut. Yeah. I, if you yeah. did not know that. And yeah, he was I, the first number 15 seed in NCAA tournament history to reach the finals. So this guy doesn't fear anybody with a bit more credentials than him. Though this is his senior level debut, I'm with you. I'm excited to see – when he can start making a name for himself, this could be it right here. Yes. So Quentin Perez is a Campbell guy, right? So mm -hmm. that program obviously has made huge jumps. Colette leaves. Uh, Scotty Sentes takes over. Quentin Perez has been a, a part of that transition, I believe. So mm -hmm. it's a great program. I just can't wait to see him compete. I think he's got a little bit of size on Ronnie Perry. But Ronnie Perry obviously <laughs> um, has, has he's gotten bigger since – you know, when he was a 149 pounder, 75 kilos, he's going to be like one, what, 165, I think, 166, something mm -hmm. like that. So I'm just, that, that's interesting to me see when, when someone jumps 15, 20 pounds to right. see other, because Quentin Perez is pretty big. I believe he was. He's apparently six feet tall too. So I'm excited to see like how this height benefits him at all. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That, that, those matchups are things I like to see. So Quentin Perez mm -hmm. is like a, a bigger guy. So maybe he's cutting down, Perry's coming up. You never know. I mean, <laughs> So we see them on the yeah. mat. It's a lot like when you ask me about uh, the, the, the women's matchup, I'm like, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what to expect. I know that they're, they're going to score a lot of points and they're going to attack. Right. But like, you know what you're getting with Ronnie Perry, but Quentin Perez, I think is a lot bigger. Like he's going to be physically yeah. taller and bigger frames. Right. I'm just excited to see, you know, Ronnie Perry compete, I guess is, would be my main thing. He, Cause the guy's a competitor. We saw it in Cleveland in 2000. Yep. 
Yeah, and I mean, Quentin Perez also had a match on January 2nd on Rockfin. He won, and it was at Battle of the Banks. So he's already had a little bit of experience in these types of things. So we'll see how that matches up as well, a senior day view versus someone who's trying to just keep the ball rolling. Also, Quentin Perez, a multiple sport athlete back in the day. So maybe we'll see, you know, the type of athlete he is when he talk the mat, takes the mat. You talked about it. You said these aren't just wrestlers, these are athletes, so I'm excited about that. But one match I cannot wait for, and it's because I'm a PA wrestling girl, Zeb, you know this, Chance Marsteller, Evan Wick, taking the mat at 79 kilograms. Chance Marsteller was basically the face of Pennsylvania wrestling when I was growing up for a while. Like, he was there. He was right there, and everybody was really excited to see what he was going to do in his life, and sure, through the trials, tribulations, bumps in the roads, I'm excited to see him sort of make a comeback. I mean, we're talking about one of the most dynamic guys, like you said, in Pennsylvania history. I believe he was an undefeated four-time state champ for Kennerdale. This guy's unbelievable. 166-0. Oh. Yeah. 166-0. Oh. In PA, he didn't do it at Easton. He didn't do it at Northampton, Nazareth. He didn't do it at North Allegheny, right? Like, those are some of the all-time great schools, right? That He didn't right. do it at those schools. He didn't do it at a Whip Hill school. He didn't do it at uh, a Lehigh Valley school, Right. He did it at a school that's, like, on the Maryland border, isn't it? Isn't Kendra Dale, like, way down there in, like, the southern part? Listen, when you think of PA wrestling, you Kendra Dale doesn't even come to your mind. Exactly. Like, Chance Marshall himself does, but Kendra Dale, everyone's like, where is that? Who, who is he wrestling for? Yeah. And he was really yeah. vocal about that in his high school career, saying, I'm going to put Kendra Dale on the map. And he did, but since then, I don't think much has really well, no. come of that school either. So, no, it's not this giant production of wrestling coming out of there, but – Keep in mind the outstanding wrestler as well at PIAA States three times. Yeah, like, he's on. Right. This guy was it. And in and, and this matchup, I think the other really cool thing about it is it's, it's totally contrasting body styles. Evan mm-hmm. Wick is 6'2". Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I interviewed him in uh, Cleveland when he was a freshman because they, they're both All-Americans in Cleveland. Same way, I think, I think Wick pinned him. I want to say he pinned him. No, he pinned Marinelli. He pinned Marinelli, but – I, and then I think Chance beat Wick for third and fourth in Pittsburgh, I believe. If, am I wrong? I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look. But, like, these guys wrestled. These guys wrestled a bunch, right? So that's what I like. I, I believe at NCAA tournaments. So that's what's awesome about it. Um, but contrasting body styles, contrasting coasts, Wick's from Southern California, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Chance is from PA. So that's what I like about it. And uh, both – multiple time all Americans at the same weight. I mean, right. I don't know if you get a better matchup on the card as far as history goes back. Right. Yeah. That's what I love about it. I mean, just contrasting body styles, Wicks massive, um, short and compact for, for chance Mark Steller. Um, I know he's going to do the rubber knee thing where he dislocates his knee. I hate that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, if you watch, he's got these crazy rubber joints in it. I don't know, man. It really makes me sick to look at yeah. it. But he he can no, roll. Yeah, that was funny. And um, yeah, Wick got on fire in 2018. He got on fire and was like pinning, cradling, and pinning everybody at the at uh in the concies at uh NCAs in Cleveland. So I'm, I'm excited. I, yeah, ooh, you got me. I'm I'm intrigued, right? And then like I said, the opposite body frames. And then we have Wick for more seasons, right? We have Wick for more seasons at uh, Wisconsin. I want to say two more. I, I was looking at the rankings yesterday and not seeing him at 165 was very odd to me. I mean, judging is at 79 kilos. If they did put him in, which I don't know if they're going to, because they can pull the red shirt, right? They can put him in whenever they want to. Mm-hmm. I think you'd see him at 174. And wait, Hannah, wait until you see how massive Evan Wick is. He's I haven't huge. seen him in person. Like I, when I think of Evan Wick, yes, I think of that lanky, <laughs> that traditional lanky wrestler. But the height thing, I haven't seen yet. And Chance Marcel is definitely that PA, like compact wrestler build, the traditional wrestler build that you would see. So excited to see how they match up again. And Evan Wick coming off a loss as well of David McFadden, where he lost seven four in Wisconsin's RTC event. So is he going to have a little bit of fire under his butt as well? Maybe. We'll see. That's what I'm really excited to see, for sure. I can't wait for you to see how massively huge Evan Wick is. He might have grown. He could be 6'3 now. The dude is huge. So, 
So maybe I can wear heels on the sidelines, right? Every time I'm, I'm at a wrestling event, I'm like, man, I got to keep it, keep it low. Everybody's going to be like, yeah. right here. Keep, keep, it low. <laughs> keep it low because we're talking about our next matchup and you know, you might be post interviewing Luke Pletcher. I don't want you to make the guy feel bad. I don't know why you would want to do that. Come on, Hannah. Jeez, oh, Pete. Flats. Flats all day. Come on. The heels right. might stick Flats in the mat. Don't be like that, Hannah. Come on. Flats it is. Luke Fletcher, 67 kilograms versus Dean Heil. I mean, this is a matchup I know a lot of people are going to want to be tuning into. I think both of these guys want to get a piece of each other on the mat as well. And Zeb, I know this has to be exciting for you. Dean Howe was a four-time Ohio State champ, so you being an Ohio guy, I know you followed him throughout his career. And Luke Pletcher went to Ohio State, and he was also wrestled in the first PWC event as well. So tell me what are your initial thoughts when you heard that matchup? So when I heard that matchup, I've been following Dean since he was a middle schooler. I, I uh, covered all his OEC events. Um, I covered, I had one of the brothers yesterday in a duel at Cleveland State. Logan Heil won against uh, West Virginia. Um, know the family. Dad wrestled at John Carroll. So I know these people, you know, they're really good people. They're from Brunswick. Um, another brother, there's a senior brother that's at uh, Campbell. That's a 149 pounder. That's Josh, I believe. So, and Logan, the younger one has a twin. So it's, it, it's crazy to see these guys grow up and you watch them grow up, right? And, um, you know, I followed Dean ever since he won a weight class. He won the uh, – he beat George DiCamillo in the, the semifinals as a freshman. At, well, I think it was even 103 then. I don't even think it was 106 yet. So, you know, to see him grow up and see what he's done and then kind of to see how his uh, career finished out at Oklahoma State. And now he's on the senior level. He's still doing – still wrestling a ton, right? Dean Hiles still wrestles a ton. And I'm, I'm interested to see if uh, – we're going to see sophomore, junior, Dean Heil. You know, he looked injured at the 2018 NCAAs. I want, I'd like to see an old Dean Heil versus a really, really, really good Luke Pletcher. Luke Pletcher, the first takedown against Dave Habit and PWC won. That's all I need to see from Luke Pletcher. He's powerful. We obviously know he's compact, but now – he, he's feeling good. He looks really, really, really good. I think he beat Dave Habit 9-0. Could have tacked him, didn't. I guess he took the gas off a little bit, took the brick off the accelerator. But I just was so impressed with Luke Pletcher in that PWC one. So this matchup, once again, I can't tell you what we're going to see. You know, Dean's obviously a little longer than, than Luke. So it's, I just love the, the all up and down these when you're at uh, Zeb, what should I expect? I know we're going to see Chance Marsteller try and dislocate his knee. I know that. I know. But, like, I don't know what we're going to – I don't know what to expect. I don't know what Dean Heil is going to show up. This is the one – I think this is the one a lot of people, like I said, are going to tune into because everyone's sort of feeling that same way. We saw Pletcher and Habit, and, yes, everyone was super impressed, but I don't think Pletcher was settled right there. He wasn't complacent. To him, this is a this is a step – on a stepping ladder right here. This is, okay, we got that guy out of the way. That was some international feel in terms. I got him, but Dean Heil is someone I'm going to see possibly time and time in competition that's really going to matter for me. So this is this is where he can really start making the staple for his name. I know that's what he wants to do. And then Dean Heil at the same time, I think like you were saying, this is going to really test to see is he where he was when he was recording perfect seasons and national championships. Is he going to be able to do it again? I mean, both of these guys have something to prove, in my opinion, in this match. Absolutely. And the other thing with, you know, Dean Heil, they changed the scramble rules. That count, the danger count, was because of Dean Heil. You know that, right? They changed the NCAA rules because Dean Heil would do the crazy sit. Guys would have him in danger. He'd scramble one way or the other. And then they, would, they started that danger rule call. And that was a Dean Heil rule, essentially. Kind of like the, the Jordan Oliver, Logan Steber have two legs rule, right? You got both legs, it's two, you know, because Oliver would have won that match had they changed the rules. So they changed those scramble rules and those danger rules was something that was a Dean Heil thing. So it's like when they're changing NCAA rules about guys, you know how – I think that says a lot for that guy. I think that says a lot for that guy. Um, I remember the Clarion guy, James uh, Snapper Fleming. They changed the backside headlock because of him He because he was just – he was making people's jaws explode and he was a mutant. So, I mean, I, I think that says a lot about a person. I like talking about when they make a rule change for someone. 
you know that that person is an impactful, gifted athlete, obviously. And, and yeah, I, I'm excited. I like Dean. Dean's a good guy. I got a good relationship with their family. So I, I'm excited to see them. Um, I just want Luke Pletcher to start making me some woodworking things. I'm in my new office right now, Hannah. Hannah, I'm in my new office. Look, that's a piece of, this is, look, that is the track door. That's, that's a pocket door. It's going to go right there. That's drywall. The pocket door is right here. Look, look, we'll give you a little, we'll give you a little, that wall's just getting roughed in. See, this is the mm. new studio. I think All I right. might have to have some Luke Pletcher woodwork in here somewhere. I don't know. This is one of them. This is uh, the woodwork. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Maybe, maybe that would be in the background and we could see right. that. And of course, you know, I'm going to have all types of props. You know, there's going to be defense soap, barbarian hour stuff, go high, okay, stuff. I'll have to bring this stuff and give, give you some. I owe you a tripod, too. I've got to get you a new tripod so we can get. <laughs> you don't owe me uh, anything, Zeb. You don't owe me anything, but. We got to get it going. We got to get it going. Um, I'm, really, I'm really excited, Zeb. I know on Tuesday we are going to see some matches all over the place from every level of competition you can imagine. And. We have given some type of analysis on what our thoughts are coming into these matches, but I know we will have double the information come Tuesday for everyone. So if you're looking for a little bit more, you're going to have to join us on Tuesday on Rockfin because we will have so much more information regarding these matchups, how these guys are feeling going into these matches, what you can be expecting. And overall, you would just get to see some exciting wrestling come for the PWC2 event. Zeb will be there. I will be there. We're looking forward to seeing everyone. Zeb, your final thoughts. My final thoughts are wrestling, high level wrestling is going to happen from the youth level, middle school level, all the way up to the senior level. Um, we have a two time NCAA champ on the card, multiple NCAA finalists on the card. Uh, I think that you can't go wrong. You want to tune in at six. You want to tune in at six. If you want to see the future stars, you want to be there at six. And these cards, as we know, go really fast. They go really fast because mm -hmm. we're not doing. I don't think we're doing the promotions in between. There's not commercials. It's like boom, 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 boom. So you're going to want to be there, and you're, you're looking at an in-and-out hour to event at the most, maybe hour and 20 minutes at the most, I would say, Hannah. So I'd be there at 6, 6 to 7.30, mark off your time, because it's going to be boom, 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 back to back to back to back. And um, P PWC, Pittsburgh Wrestling Club, is doing an excellent job. So, yeah, tune in, 6 p.m. on uh, – Tuesday, the 26th of January on the Rockfin channel for Pittsburgh Wrestling Club. Make sure you subscribe to Pittsburgh Wrestling Club, right? Pittsburgh Wrestling Club. Don't be subscribing to Go High Cast and this other Hannah Mears one that's about to pop up. Pittsburgh Wrestling Club, they put the event on. They're doing the production. Make sure you subscribe to their channel on Rockfin. It's $10 a month. It's totally worth it. So that's it for me, Hannah. You tell me. You got anything? I'm ready for some great wrestling across the board. And believe it or not, I'm really ready to learn. This is going to be a big learning experience for me in terms of who's coming up in the wrestling world. And I'm really excited for that. So I can't complain, can't say I'm going into this one knowing absolutely everything about everyone, but I'm excited to find out. You know me, I'm going to get in there. I'm going to find the ins and outs of who these guys are and women on the mats come Tuesday. So tune in with us, subscribe to the Pit Wrestling Club, be there at six o'clock. We've got a lot in store. All right, Hannah, thank you for the time. And uh, we will uh, get this out there and let people see what's going on. It's in two days. Great matchups up and down the lineup.